Greetings and welcome to a new video. We continue with another example about a synchronous motor. So let's look at our problem. We have a 500 volts RMS, 60 hertz, 8 pole, 3 phase, when in this case a delta connected synchronous motor. It has per phase a state resistance of 0 ohm, so there is no state resistance. It will be a state reactance of 2 ohms and the motor develops a power of 100 kilowatts with a lagging power factor of 0 0.77. Now for this condition we also require a field current which is 9 amperes. Now what we like to calculate is the new field current in order to make this power factor unity. So we would like to change the lagging power factor to a unity power factor. In order to do that, of course, we will again have the same developed power. So we will like to keep the developed power, but we will like to increase or change the power factor to unity. So how do we work this out? Let's look at our solutions step by step. So again, we start with the model. This is our model for our synchronous motor. Again, our phase voltage and also the stator current and also the elements in that stator and also the back EMF uh, situation here. So if I again use the Kirchhoff voltage law here, which is our starting point, we can develop again this expression. And then rewriting this for our back EMF, I have then this equation. So this is then our back EMF. And this will be again used for two conditions. We have the current condition and we have also the second condition of the situation of the new field current. So for a delta connected motor, the phase voltage will be exact the same as the line voltage because this is given here in the information and that is the line voltage. So that means the phase voltage will be line voltage and it will be then 500 volts in magnitude RMS. And we can of course convert that to the phase notation which is then shown here. So let's look at the condition one. What we want, let's first look at the stator current Static current is given by this expression again, given by the subscript 1, and we have the magnitude and also the associated phase for this current. Okay, so we have also the power factor. So the power factor was given PF for the situation 1, and that is then related to that phase of this current, which is then the theta 1. Now, we know the power factor and we know it is lagging. So we can just substitute the value here, just rewrite this such that you have the phase. And in this case, this is a lagging. That means this phase will be a minus 40 degrees. So we have then the next one is then the developed power. The developed power given here is 100 kilowatts. Now we can do for a three phase system. That is then the three times the developed power per phase which is then the phase voltage times the phase current and times the power factor actually. So if I now just rewrite this such that I have also the magnitude of this current here, the stator current, I have this expression. Now I know the developed power, I know the phase voltage, I also know the power factor for this case. So if I now just substitute the values, I will get 87 amperes. Now I have now the necessary information to set up this expression for the state of current. So the phasor representation of the state of current will be then 87 amperes with a phase orientation of minus, again, minus 40 degrees because it is a lagging power factor. Okay, then we have the following situation. Using this formula, we can just substitute now what we have for our current and also what we have for our RS and Excess. So we know the resistance is zero, but the reactance was two ohm. So if I just substitute the values, I will have this, and this will be then converted to the polar representation. That will be easy to, for this uh, multiplication. So we have then the following uh, simplified form. If I now change this expression, these two expressions in the rectangular form, such that I can add them up. I have this and the next step will be then this one and add them up in several steps you have this situation. Now we need to convert this to a 
polar representation such that we can see the magnitude and also the phase. And that will be done. And then the result will be then 410 volts with a phase orientation of minus 90 degrees. Okay, that's our back EMF for this condition one. Now, if I also look at the, the diagram, we have here our voltage, which we apply the phase voltage, that is the 500 volts. We also have the current, which is then the 87 amperes. Now we have also the associated phase for that theta one, the phase current, which is then minus 40 degrees. You can see it is negative. We also have the 410 volts, which is the back EMF for this case. You can see the back EMF is smaller than the applied phase voltage. Now, if I know that is always the case when you have a lagging power factor. We have also the torque angle here, that's also the called torque angle, which is minus 19 degrees. And we have, of course, the volts across this, these two elements. Since this is, of course, a zero, we only have the volts across this reactance, which is shown here. And this arrow has a length of 174 volts. That's actually shown here. So factorially, these two will result in 500 volts. And that is the representation here. What we want in the condition two, the next one is, we would like to have the theta to zero, such that the power factor will be unity. And we will, of course, do that by changing other parameters. So let's look at our following situation. Again, we have the current situation and we go to condition two. Again, the power factor, we would like to have the unity power factor, so the PF for the second condition must be one. And if I now again use the formula we have used also for the condition one, just use the power factor here of one, I get zero degrees. That is very straightforward. So we have a phase for our current, stated current of zero degrees. Okay, so develop power, that must be of course the same as in the uh, previous condition. So again, 100 kilowatts. So I can again set up the equation here, but then using the stator current for the second case and also the power factor for the second case. And this is just one actually for the second case. So if I just rewrite this in order to calculate the new stator current, because that will change in order to change the power factor, I will have then this expression that will give me 67 amperes. So you can see we have actually decreased our state of current from 87 amps to 67 amps in magnitude in order to make this power factor unity. So combine these together, you will have this expression in polar form. Okay, what we have then the following situation also for our back EMF because that will also change because since this is changing and these two are the same, this cannot be the same as in the previous condition. So we have a new condition. Again, add the values we have here and then change this in a polar representation and you follow the steps as we did in the previous case. You will get 500 minus J134 volts. Again, converting this to the polar representation, you can see direct magnitude and also the phase. So the magnitude is for 517 volts and we have a torque angle of minus 15 degrees. All right, so this is the condition for the unity power factor. So let's look at also the diagram. Now this is now the diagram we have now here. You can see the stator current is in phase with our phase voltage, which is of course required in order to have the power factor of unity. And again, this is our 500 volts and this is then this 67 amps. And the theta here, the associated theta two is zero degrees. Now, the value of this back EMF here now is 507. So it is larger than the phase voltage. And our torque angle is minus 50 degrees and our voltage here, which we'll lose across this reactance, is 134 volts, which is actually shown here. Okay, what do we do next? Of course, we would like to calculate the required field current for this new condition.
So the field current for the new condition, we can relate that to the field current of the previous condition. So the field current of the new condition divided by the field current of the previous condition is also the relation of this of the uh, back EMF voltages. So if I now rewrite this, I have this expression. I know the back EMF of this new condition, also the previous condition, and also the field current given in the exercise. So you just substitute the values, you will get 11.3 amperes. That is our new required field current. So you can see the field current is increased from 9 amps to 11.3 amps, but the stator current is decreasing from 87 to 67 amps. That is the condition for this problem. Okay, let's also look in summary what we have so far. We have the condition one. This is our stator current, the back EMF, the field current given in the exercise. And this was our diagram. If I now also look at condition two, and this was our stator current. So the stator current is indeed decreasing in magnitude and the phase is now from minus 40 changing to zero degrees and also the back emf is increasing and the torque angle is also a little bit increasing but the field current is also increasing so in order to have the unity power factor you need to increase your back emf and you also need to increase your field current but that will result in a decrease of your stator current so looking at then the new condition of this diagram you can see that we have this triangle where we have also a right angle here so you can see that the situation has changed in order to change your power factor you have to have your stator current in phase with your phase voltage and that is the condition what we have here now all right, this was our for example number two about a synchronous motor where we change our unity power factor from a uh, lagging of 0 0.77 to a unity power factor. If you have any questions about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again for your attention and see you next time. Take care.